Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Műsoraink sok nyelvet tartalmaznak. Kérjük, tekintse meg itt suprememastertv.com per schedule. Like one in Bodhisattva, yeah, Avalokiteshvara, she reincarnates time after time, life after life, yeah. But sometimes she was a wife, just a normal wife, and sometimes she is uh, as somebody else. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in Chinese and English with subtitles in Arabic Alexis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. means how are you in Icelandic. Friendly embraces good-hearted viewers. My name is Kristin. The kind people of inspiring Iceland cherish your loving hearts. Iceland is a Nordic island country located in the North Atlantic. Nordic refers to having Scandinavian descent, culture, and language, which Iceland shares with Finland, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Iceland is a place of extraordinary beauty, from glittering glaciers and geothermal pools to the breathtaking light show of the Aurora Borealis to the soft pink hue of the midnight sun. Although Iceland has a small population with only 340,397 inhabitants, they have a few famous faces that you may recognize, most notably Victus Finnbogadotter, the first nationally elected female president in the world, and Johanna Sigurdóttir, the prime minister who resolved the country's economic crisis in 2008 and also passed social reforms for women and LGBTQ people during her term. The world's most northerly capital, Reykjavik, is home to the kind of egalitarianism and green thinking that the Nordic nations are known for. These eco-conscious and gender equality supporting Icelanders are reported to be some of the happiest people in the world. In addition to be dubbed one of the most joyous countries in the annual World Happiness Report, with only a 2% unemployment rate and no army. In addition, they are pioneers in the geothermal energy for space heating and use of hydropower, making use of their abundantly flowing water. The Icelanders are welcoming and hospitable. 
as well as honest people who do and say things sincerely. It is a privilege to share a glimpse of extraordinary Iceland with you, exuberant viewers. We pray that heaven showers you with everlasting grace. For over three decades, Supreme Master Ching Hai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within and to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters such as the worshipped World Honored One, Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped Son of God, Jesus Christ, the venerated Master and Philosopher, Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, the venerated Master and Philosopher, Lao Tzu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the first Sikh Guru Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on earth. She is an extraordinary living example of compassion, regularly sending material and financial assistance, as well as love to refugees, the homeless, natural disaster victims, and others needing relief. Supreme Master Ching Hai is deeply grateful to the beloved God for all the financial help, comfort, and support to the afflicted and needy and to any good cause over the years. As a humble vessel for hears, compassion and love toward his precious children. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thank all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. Supreme Master Ching Hai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media, governments, and individuals, as well as many awards from them, such as the 2006 Goosey Peace Prize, considered the Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavi Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Ching Hai Day an honorary citizen of the United States, etc., and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for her outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds.
etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thank all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness. Wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Ching Hai promotes the peaceful and loving plant-based diet and envisions with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life, a tranquil and glorious all vegan world where animals and people live in blissful harmony. Her initiatives to spread the vegan trend are diverse. And have included alternative living flyer distribution, the international vegan restaurants Loving Hut, vegan food product companies, vegan fur products, Supreme Master Television, as well as regularly speaking to influential government and media leaders, and participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we are aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations while saving our planet from climate change and disasters. Over the years, Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled worldwide, from the Americas to Africa, from Europe to Oceania. And held hundreds of discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled "The Life of Lord Mahavira: Always Concentrate Inside," Part One of Five, on Between Master and Disciples, given in Chinese and English on July Seventh, Two Thousand and Nineteen, at the New Land Ashram. Taiwan, also known as Formosa. Now is a different story, different event in Mahavira's life. Okay, you want to hear or not? Yeah, of course. You have both translation English and Chinese and Korean and whatever, yeah. Yes. Wow, what lucky people! When I was in India in the Himalaya, I had nothing. You just guess, you know. <laughs> just guess. Half of it is some Sanskrit, half of it is、uh, English, and the other half is hair. <laughs> Everything other than hair, <laughs> just like Korea, Amita. <laughs>、uh. <laughs> so whatever the English I understood, a hair I understood, and、uh, the other one、uh, one third I did not. So you can say that I understood two third <laughs> whatever the master was saying. Yeah, not too bad, right?、Mm. Two third better than nothing, huh? Don't you think? Okay, good. Now you understand everything. You lucky people.
we are trying to accommodate you guys, huh? Hopefully you really understand what I was saying, and what I am saying, and what I will be saying. Because sometimes when you sit there in front of me, I feel like you're understanding things. But when you go back home, I think maybe you return all the knowledge to me with no interest. And then whenever I have chance to talk to you personally, then I feel like, oh man, <laughs> whom have I been talking to all these years or months or days or hours or minutes? I wonder if I have been talking to any ears or just talking to my elbows. Huh? That's why I don't wear the sleeves so my elbows can listen something. <laughs> At least some listening. Eh. You guys have good translation? See, si, Sama? Good? Hey, yo, huh? Yo. Good? Bono? Bohot? Bohot? Acha? Bohot, Acha. That's all I know. Don't ask any more, <laughs> any more Indian language. I told you I understood only two thirds. Right, sister? Only hair and English. Yeah, and the rest is uh, whatever the local language that the master was speaking. Okay, let's uh, read the story of Master Mahavira. Yeah. Everything that he has to endure. These are only, I guess, only the main things. You know, either the main events in his ascetic time or just something that happened with the gods from heaven. It's not uh, all his life, of course. The whole life of the master, whoever, uh, the master maybe, cannot be written in just one book or two books or a hundred books even, because there are many things, even the physical happenings, you cannot always write it down because sometimes the Master did not say it, or sometimes there was no witness to recount, or sometimes uh, they thought it's not important, or sometimes it has been told but it's been lost, yeah, because there was no person there who was capable of recording what the Master said or what the story content and what has been told. The Buddha was lucky, yeah? The Buddha has uh, Ananda, you know, and he's always next to him. So he recorded everything and he has a super, super, super recording capability. Some people do have that, yeah, some people have that good memory ability, some don't have. When we were younger, we have a better memory. When I was younger, I remember everything immediately. I even remember the whole book, or at least most of the poetry book that was very famous in Vietnam called the Q, okay? And also other book of poetry, yeah, the whole story poetry book. I remember them. My father used to be very proud. Whenever some VIP come to my house, he called me in and tell me to recite the whole thing. And when I became older, a memory became less sharp. Then I don't remember all of these things that I used to remember. And I don't remember quickly what I have just read, like when I was younger. So these stories I am reading to you are not all of his life, okay? Bear in mind that the life of any master is never to be completed in one book or any book. Doesn't matter how many, okay? These are, I think they just pick out the, the main event or whatever event that has been passing down, okay? Now, this is another story about uh, quashing of the flames. Before we had story of uh, embodiment of love, the affliction by a demon and the uh, uh, the cruelty of the cowherd, the removal of poverty, the great renunciation ceremony. Okay, and this is another one called quashing of the flames. Once living in Shravasti, 
Shraman Vardaman was going to Haliduk village. On the way, he saw a large banyan tree. Banyan tree, yeah, similar to Bodhi tree. They have very big trunk. And uh, is that right, sister? Yeah, and have many roots that hanging down from the branches. And these roots will become trunks later. And then they will take hold of the soil and make themselves more solid with big trunk again. So the tree became bigger, 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 bigger all the time. And nothing can remove these kind of trees because they have too many legs. <laughs> the body tree is a similar thing. The reason why many uh, ancient practitioners, they sat under these kind of tree, it's like Buddha sat under body tree because they are large, they are huge, huge, and their shadow and their leaves are dense. And even if you don't have enough clothing, uh, it would chill you from the rain and the wind and the sun because it's so huge and the, the shadow spreading all around. Maybe, oof, you don't know, could be even many hundreds of meters uh, large, the shadows. Therefore, even no matter where you sit, you will always be sheltered, yeah, at least from the sun and some of the rain, you know, so that it doesn't rain so harshly on your body, especially when you are an ascetic, like uh, Lord Mahavira, who has no clothes or cloth at that time. But I was wondering why nobody offered him anything. I mean, the normal villagers, they could offer him some, you know, old piece of cloth or something, or maybe he did not accept anymore, I mean, he get used to being without anything. That would be also the ultimate freedom. Yes, that you have nothing to worry about. Like me, myself. <laughs> what do I wear today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My destiny is a little more complicated than the destiny of the Lord Mahavira and the Lord Buddha or the Lord uh, Jesus, uh, for example. Whenever any master reborn, the destiny changes, you know, according to the, the period of human history. They don't always do the same thing. Somewhere a long time ago, I read one magazine in America, and they said, Jesus, he has predicted, he said he will come back as a woman, and they will not recognize me. That's what he said. I'm not sure how trustworthy this kind of uh, magazine's report Okay, I'm just telling you for your uh, entertainment <laughs> info. Like one in Bodhisattva, yeah, Avalokiteshvara, she reincarnates time after time, life after life, yeah. But sometimes she was a wife, she's a normal wife, and sometimes she is uh, as somebody else, yeah. And in Buddha's time, she was just a bodhisattva, no wife, no husband, no children, nothing. Yes. You remember one of the story about Kwanin Bodhisattva? Yes. She was married to a man, yeah? And at night when her husband was sleeping, she saw one of his hair growing very uh, unruly, <laughs> unregularly, and inorderly out of his chin. So she was thinking, or she want to cut it, trim it, make him look handsome. Yeah. And she just get a knife, you know. She has not done it. She got a knife from kitchen, yeah, sat next to him and was about to do it. And she put her knife next to the, the neck already, a uh, uh, chin already, and the husband suddenly woke up. And he sounded alarm, you know, tell everybody, oh, she's going to kill me, she's killing me, help, help, and all that. The whole household woke up. And she was scared, you know, of course, she's frightened. Everybody woke up and then want to catch her. So she had to run. She had no time to explain. And she had to run, and she ran, and then on the way she saw a temple, a yeah? Buddhist temple, and she went in. And she told them that she's a man. <laughs> She had to say that she's a man and she wants to be a monk there. Yeah. 
So, of course, the Buddhist monks, they don't always uh, check in too much about their history, or besides, it's very difficult to check. Now, those days, they don't have computer, <laughs> right? They don't have anything stored in the uh, software, hardware, or whatever where that you say. Uh, okay, I had no idea what software is and what hardware is and what middle or where. Uh, I just wear what I have to wear. <laughs> the rest, uh, no idea. <laughs> now... Uh, so they didn't check anything. They say, oh, of course, if you want to be a monk, hey, welcome, welcome. Nah? Because in Buddhist tradition, if anybody wants to be a monk, you have to let him. Hmm. And if you stop them to be a monk, yeah, then you have very bad karma, yeah, according to the sutra. And if you let somebody be a monk willingly or help him, her to become a monk, and then your merit is very, very big, huge, immense, yeah? Remember those uh, Buddha scriptures I read to you? Okay. So, of course, they welcome. And uh, the temple always needs uh, one or two more hands, you know, to help with cleaning up, repairing, as well as, you know, all kind of uh, arts and ends stuff, yeah? Yeah. So she became a monk and stayed there peacefully, safely, for a while, until one of the Buddhist followers, a beautiful woman, came along. She liked him, or her, or him, yes. <laughs> she, liked, she, liked, she liked the form of that new monk, oh, because she's beautiful, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva as a lay person at that time, was beautiful already. That's why she was married into a rich family, a yeah? good husband. And even if she shaved her hair, she still looked stunning. He, uh, she, has <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> handsome. Oh, this woman fell head over heel in love with this monk, nun, whatever. <laughs> Monk, okay? So called monk. Ah, she keeps trying so hard to get him. But of course, this monk is no monkey business, yeah? So of course he refused her outright all the time, anytime, and she felt very hurt. This person, this woman, this lady, a uh, girl, she was actually a daughter of some very influential family. Yeah, so she won't take no for an answer, eh? Anyway, all of her affection is uh, very unrepaid, and she will feel very, very, very frustrated and angry. And then somehow she managed to uh, have an affair with a servant boy in the house, and then she became pregnant. And then in those times, if you're pregnant without being wedded, then you are a criminal. They beat you up. They dig a hole in the ground and put your stomach there, and you lay down with the stomach in the hole so that it won't hurt the baby, and then they beat you up and until you confess who the father is. She confessed that the, the new uh, monk in the temple, the handsome uh, nun, is her uh, lover. Man, okay, they came and dragged her out, him, her out, and then uh, beat him up also terribly, tell him he has confessed or not. She remained silent, because if he confessed, he's a liar. And if he doesn't confess, uh, then also no good. They keep beating her, the woman also, to get another uh, father, okay? So he just keep uh, quiet and finally... They cannot beat him up anymore. They also got tired of beating. They say, okay, uh, you cannot be a monk anymore. And then when the child is born, we will talk about that. Yeah. You want to marry this woman or not? He say, no, no can do, don't want. <laughs> so, of course, they throw him out. So the temple people also cannot do much more. They put him, her, outside in a little hut. Yeah, maybe a Mongolian tent outside, outside of the temple gate, because he's not allowed to stay inside anymore as a monk, no more monk. Yeah. 
And so it, they still let her do the work, you know, taking care of the temple and all that, but he's not allowed to be a monk or stay inside, you know, anymore. So he stay outside. And when the baby was born, the family, the girl, took the baby and brought it to the temple and said, you have to take care. And she want to marry somebody else at that time. Okay, something like that. I can't remember very well. It's not a big mistake that I made, <laughs> whether I remember or not. And then, so the monk didn't know what to do. He had to take care of the baby. Yeah. He took really good care with all the motherly love, which is very easy, uh, manifested because she's a woman and a loving one. So every day, she, a monk, uh, went out begging for milk and food and then bring the child up uh, until he grows up, maybe about nine, ten years already. And then one day this monk died. The Kwan Yin Bodhisattva manifestation died. I mean, reincarnation died. She died and then of course they have to, well, after a person died, they wipe you, they bathe you with something, and then they change your clothes into clean one and put flour or something and then carry you into the coffin. And then they realize that this is no man was a woman. So everybody oh, feels so, 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 so regretful and so sad and so sorrowful. So they worship her from then on. Charismatic viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled The Life of Lord Mahavira, Always Concentrate Inside, Part 1 of 5, on Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May your noble soul attract goodness and beauty wherever you go. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.